How's it going guys? It is 3.51 a.m. 8th of May here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology, step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, moment underscore medical, MHL, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 44 year old man, three month history, painless right sided facial swelling. There's a paraspinomegaly, mediastinal mass, biopsy of facial swelling confirms the diagnosis. Rituximab is commenced. Question wants to know which of the following is the patient at greatest risk uh, from as a result of this pharmacologic therapy. Now, this diagnosis, clearly not critical for answering this question, but I decided to run with it anyway because I want you to know how Hodgkin presents, Hodgkin lymphoma slash Hodgkin disease, which basically every question I've observed on NBME material, notably for TCK, they're going to give you a painless lateral neck mass slash painless lateral facial swelling, okay? It's just lymphadenopathy. And then they will throw in hepatosplenomegaly sometimes. They can tell you that there's a mediastinal mass. It's not a thymoma, it's mediastinal lymphadenopathy. They can also tell you that there is a Verkhoff node, spelled Verkhoff node, okay, so trucyocyte malignancy. That's a palpable left supraclavicular lymph node, need not be associated with gastric cancer, okay? So next best step on 2CK is biopsy of a lymph node, showing you Reed Sternberg cells, your CD 1530 positive B cells with owl eye appearance. Okay, now rituximab is commenced. The mechanism of action. Well, this is pass level, which is it inhibits CD20 on B cells. So, question wants to know now what's most likely to result uh, from commencing rituximab? You say, well, no fucking idea. Well, let's just hop to the answer choices. Okay, so choice A, acute tubular necrosis, wrong fucking answer. For US simile, highest yield agent that will cause this, aminoglycosides, okay? So gentamicin, tobramycin, amikacin. Amikacin is a weird sounding aminoglycoside that shows up on one of the two CK assessments as causing ATN, but gentamicin is your classic agent, okay? We can do a long discussion on this stuff. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, actually real quick, I will just tell you tangentially that you should know NSAIDs, beta-lactam, cephalosporins do not cause acute tubular necrosis. They cause tubular interstitial nephropathy. That's going to be maculopapular ash 50% of the time, eosinophils, white blood cells in the urine. And then for membranous glomerular nephropathy, a nephrotic syndrome, that's going to be gold salts, sulfonamides, dapsone. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, a granulocytosis, wrong fucking answer. So this just means neutropenia. Okay, so... The granulocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, but just refers to neutrophils and eosimile. So highest yield agent causing this would be clozapine, one of the antipsychotics. Also the thionamides, the anti-thyroid drugs, so propyl thiouracil, methimazole, methotrexate, very high yield for causing a granulocytosis. We can talk about other agents, lower yield. I mean, gancyclovir for CMV, ticlopidine. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, actually, I'm just going to keep doing this repetitive, okay? So just another point I want to make is that the way granulocytosis shows up on NBME questions is mouth ulcers, okay? They really like that. Maybe half of questions will just tell you mouth ulcers. So we'll say, patient was recently treated in hospital for hyperthyroidism and now has mouth ulcers. You're like, what the fuck? It's not dramatic, okay? It's just agranulocytosis, probably from PTU. I said methimazole can do it as well, but propothyrazole used for thyroid storm. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see bacterial pneumonia? Correct answer. Now, you say, well, how are we supposed to know this? This sounds very nitpicky. I agree, but this shows up on one of the NBME questions, all right? They ask for uh, the potential adverse sequela of rituximab. And here's how we can rationalize. If you know that rituximab inhibits CD20 on B cells, you say, well, what do B cells do? B cells mature into plasma cells that produce immunoglobulins. And immunoglobulins are for humoral immunity, right? I mean, immunoglobulins are what are going to clear out bacterial infections most of the time. So if we knock out B cells, we're knocking out humoral immunity and our ability to fight bacterial infections. So we can link that, we can make that association here with bacterial pneumonia. 
We don't necessarily have to conclude it's the answer right now. I said it is the correct answer, but when we're walking through the answer choices, that is the association we're going to make. We'll look at the other answer choices, synchronism or kinkinism, wrong fucking answer. This just means tinnitus, which is ear ringing plus headache. This is going to be due to quinidine, which is a type 1A antiarrhythmic sodium channel blocker. It's pretty much all you need to know about quinidine. It can cause torsades as well. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, pulmonary fibrosis, wrong fucking answer. So amiodarone, busulfan, methotrexate, bleomycin. Okay, there's agents we can talk about that cause it. So these are some high yield uh, sequelae slash adverse effects for USMLE. And in terms of a quick summary here, just rituximab inhibits CD20 on B cells. And USMLE wants you to know that will uh, decrease your humoral immunity, increase risk of bacterial pneumonia. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.